Hi, this is the Mini Painting Noob. Tonight I'm going to be painting Sir Gawain from Shadows Over Camelot, the board game. Uh, this is the figure here, and um, he is the green player. Um, and we can see on his character card here that he's green, gold, his leather bits, grey beard. So I'll be uh, matching as close as I can to the character card the colour scheme as we go through and paint this guy. As always, if you like my videos, please subscribe and uh, like and I really appreciate your comments. So uh, feel free to offer me advice or um, yeah, just support and stuff in the comments below. Uh, this is a long format video, um, no cuts or edits, kind of like a live stream painting show. So uh, if you would like to see the finished product uh, rather than the process, then feel free to skip to the end of the video um, or uh, jump, jump through and see what colors we choose and how the figure progresses. Um, I'm not sure how long this will be, but I think the last one I've painted was... Uh, this guy, he took about an hour, and um, he's not quite finished, so we'll see uh, how long Sir Gawain takes, and uh, yeah, catch you at the end of the video, don't be a noob. Alright, so to get started, um, I'm going to have a look at what colours we have, um, probably start with the face and beard um, as usual, because they are the sort of harder to get to areas um, and I should probably get a stand to hold this guy as well but anyway um, so we'll probably jump in here and do face beard um, details like all of the leather work uh, and then I'll paint around the details with the grey for the, over the silver um, tonight I'm trying out a couple of new brushes, so I've got a triple O um, red sable for the fine work, and I've got a number two sable. So uh, prior to this I've been using the Army Painter uh, small detail and standard. Um, they are quite good, but they're wearing out. Um, Wearing out a lot faster than I thought brushes would wear out. Um, and prior to those, I was using the Monster Brush, um, which um, has quite a, a uh, what do you call it? They sort of they stick out at the end. It doesn't quite do a nice point anymore. Um, so I'll look at conditioning these and reshaping them. Uh, but in the meantime, I bought a couple of new brushes to try out um, Red Sable. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. Um, three minutes 30 in and I haven't even opened a pot of paint. What am I doing? Sorry, guys. So, uh, skin tone. Let's go Crusader skin. Uh, these shouldn't need too much of a shake because I've shaken them all already today, but... I will give every paint a quick shake before I use it. Um, and you'll see today I did um, top off the caps with uh, color so we can see what colors uh, we're going to be using. So, yeah, I'll just give this a quick shake. That should be plenty. And we're not going to need a lot, it's a little drop. And it's real detail work, so I do have my, I think it's two and a half times uh, magnifiers on, on top of my regular glasses. And I just find uh, wearing magnifiers a lot easier. Um, just painting minis in general, I kind of use them all the time now. Not even for just fine detail work. Um, and even then, I'm not that good at 
staying within the lines as you will find out. Um, I think that's his nose, so we can go over that. Yeah, the paint's just running straight off this brush. I wonder if is that uh, a feature of the paint or the brush. Let me know what your favourite brushes are. So I'm um, new to this, so I'm just buying whatever my hobby store sells. I'm going to try and get some of this pulling out from the side of his helmet. Uh, we want it to pull in his eye socket a little bit, but not quite that much. So I'll get some of that back out. Um, so this is the case with the speed paint. I find just, you know, put it on and then um, let it flow everywhere, find out where it's going to flow. And then take off what you don't want. Seems to work for me. Very, very light skin tone. Need a little bit more on the tip of his nose. Yeah, that's good. I think it ran into his beard a bit, but I don't know if we have to worry about that too much. We're we'll painting it a darker grey colour anyway. Probably spending way too much time on a face, but faces are important. That's what we're going to be looking at when we're playing with this figure. I'm gonna get his eye sockets and stuff just right. Do you know I've got this brush? It seems to have a long tail on it, like it's got a bit that extends the point. It's weird. Okay. Um, he's got lips there as well. I mean, we could go with a ready color, but I'll just stick some flesh tone in there, see if I can, how small a detail can I get with this new brush. That's not bad. Pretty good, get right in there. I do I can't get that little bit there though. Does not want to get paint on it. It's like a hole in the model, maybe. There we go. Okay, so on the skin tone, I should have washed my water. Did all this painting today, and I've got very grey water. I'm not sure how often you're supposed to clean it. Because all the particles sink to the bottom, but still, it's very grey. Okay, um, that is skin tone. He has a light beard. Um, so options, we have a runic grey, but it's quite blue. Might work, because yeah, yeah. It's 
Give it a go, runic grey. Blue beard. Blue grey beard. Do one drop. And I'm just using a dry pallet off to the side. It's actually just a normal lid off a plastic container. Always recycle. The best form of recycle is reusing in a different way than what it came. Um, and I wash these as well. So. Right. Got a stack of about six or eight of them. And just cycle through them. All right, uh, gray beard. I feel like that's a bit too much paint on. I don't want to lose control of where this flow is going. I feel like that's still a bit much. I always wondered why in the professional painting videos um, they always pick up some paint on their brush and then you know wipe it all off onto a towel. And I was like, what are you wasting your paint? What are you doing? But um, as I paint more, I realize um, that your paintbrush can have too much paint on it for the purpose that you're having for it and so dabbing some paint off can be a good thing now he's got a mustache See if we can get on the top of that. Under his nose there. That looks great. Some more detail on the lower bed down here. Not sure if you can see behind his shield, but his beard goes down in there. So I'm just trying to get the um, pulling to happen in logical places not too much in one area all right okay now he also has hair behind his head um, so it sort of keeps extending over his shoulder And just under his helmet. We could use this um, as the color for his armor. Um, that would make painting a lot easier because then you just sort of run over everywhere that's silver with the same color. You don't have to be so careful. Um, but I think we will try a different color. Rewatched a couple of my earlier videos and found um, it was back when I was using the bigger brushes, and I'd go on and and you know put the paint on. I thought it looked really good, but then I rewatched the video and found actually half the paint I put on the figure ended up falling down into like some crevice, and so some of my earlier figures, and I think like maybe this guy. Um, 
most of the skin um, paint I stuck on his face is actually in the crease around his neck. Um, <laughs> didn't notice at the time. But uh, so there you go. Something to be aware of. Thing that I am aware of now. Okay, well, that has woken him up a bit. He's now alive. He has a face. Um, I did get some brown on the metal here, so I'm just going to try and reactivate it and take it off. And that works like a charm. It's very light brush. And that's fixed. Alright. Probably not that it mattered. I'm putting a dark grey on the middle. Um, I was wondering if I've got too much pulling in these areas that haven't dried yet. So you're always just taking a little bit off. A little bit on, a little bit off. Alright, um, so the next detail aspect we have is leather. Um, in the picture he has two types of leather. His belt is a dark brown and his bag is a light brown. So I think if we start with a light brown bag, and for that we'll be using, where is it? Here we go. The hardened leather. Let's give that a shake. And a couple of drops of that. I think he's got a bag as well. So let's make sure I've got plenty. Um, you waste a lot of paint on pellets that never gets used, right? I think as soon as you get it out of the bottle, three drops. And I was like, oh yeah, you used less than one. Um, is there a reason for getting that much paint out of a pellet? Other than you think it's what you were going to use. Is it because the paint in the top of the bottle isn't as mixed as rule? Well, oh well, okay. I just, um... Did a massive hand spasm thing there and flipped brown all over his face. <laughs> what a noob. Oh well, that brush is, um... Definitely brand new. Totally caked. Okay, then we get a old brush. Bit of water. And all of that brown I just caked on will come right off. Must be a little bit quick about it so that it doesn't dry. It'll be fine, I'm putting a dark grey over this. What a noob. Maybe it's, uh, he spilled coffee on his armor in the morning. Actually, the brown over his helmet kind of makes it look uh, like a copper helmet. He spilled coffee on his beard. Let's go back over that one with the grey. Little touch up. And 
just overall, just make the hair darker. It's been all that time taking the pulling out, and now I think I'm putting it all back in again. to fix a mistake. His facial expression is definitely, oh, I spilled my coffee. I'm not sure you can see it that close. All right. He's uh, not quite fixed, but near enough. All right, back to what I was actually wanting to paint. A little bit of brown, and oh, I did it again. It's this position, and then my arms so is flicking up. I might have to edit this video after all. I'm just going to run that brown. Actually, we'll do that brown anyway, shall we? It's not a mistake. This actually looks really cool. Hardened leather over brass. Yeah, not brass, bronze. So this is the Vallejo bronze. Um, that I've painted his weapon. And the hardened leather going over the top is just adding... It's not taking away any of the metallic. It's just adding the um, shading that it so desperately needed. So yeah, here we go. Very cool. Okay. Back to his back. Okay, third time lucky. It's probably because I can't see what I'm doing properly either with this headset on. All right, onto the belt. So it comes down to the hip. Probably have too much on because it's pulling a bit too much next to the belt. I want it to color the belt, not next to yeah now let's take off some of that excess. a spot. It's really difficult to get in on this angle. There, goes in underneath its hair here. Getting it on his armor. All right. Okay. 
Yeah, let's put it on. Let me grab a stand thing. Now, you will have seen, if you've seen my videos before, I don't own any mini stands. Uh, so I've made my own. Just making one now because I put them all away. And it's just a battery with blue tack on top and a coin at the bottom. So that the coin is for stabilization so the battery doesn't fall over when you just bonk it down. And it's just a coin from the scythe the board game and put the mini on there and it means I can hold this fell up and not touch him so if we're doing that we need to move this guy up a bit too and we'll put the, make sure you're still seeing stuff all right First bit of leather strap. I know this is supposed to be speed paint, but um, when you're a noob, things are slow. Um, so yeah. Additionally, these are probably not the models that Army Painter intended for speed paint. Um, highly detailed, lots of colours, um, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Okay, here's bag and colour. A little bit more. His bag is almost entirely concealed behind his shield. Um, you can see the side and base of it there, but I've got to get in right underneath his shield there to get the front face of it. And just because it's hidden doesn't mean it doesn't get painted. Top very well. I can try. Okay, a little bit of cleanup to do around the edges. Um, brown is definitely one you want to get off. Um, it's, it's a darker color. Uh, even just mixing it around a bit is, isn't too bad. But if you can get it off the figure. Would be preferred. Maybe this is why my expensive brushes are not lasting. I'm doing a lot of cleanup work with expensive brushes, or I should be doing it with these. Maybe with some cheap ones. Okay, let's try that. Slightly cheaper brush paint off, expensive brush to put paint on. Okay, that's good. Bed it with this light brown, hard and leather. So we still have some of the bottom to do.
um, not going on the way I was expecting it to, and it's kind of coming off. I might have to wait for it to dry to tack it in. Okay. Um, all right. Let's maybe just aim at this strap going up here. I if I should do the metal actually inside his coat first. Well, this will serve as a reminder that there's other stuff here other than metal. Satchel, back strap, the bag, front strap disappears underneath his armor. So we don't have to worry about that bit. Um, he's got this little dagger here, and our options are. Yeah, let me do the light brown on this as well. So. He's got a little strap that runs down from his belt, which you can't see because I haven't painted it yet. Um, but the strap runs from here down here. There would be another one the other side. Uh, maybe we can make one up. There has to be another one. Can't even see one behind my magnifier. Must be just here. And this is all the um, metallics as well. So it's not going to look entirely like leather because it's just brown. It's actually, it's probably just going to look like a smudge. Oh well. I'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, let's just do the sword hilt. Was a little dagger hilt thing. But not the very end of it. So we do, oops, you probably don't even see any of that. Let's bring the sword hilt in the front. It's got a couple of straps going down and a little dagger. Keep saying sword, it's a dagger. Goes like that, and other side, sorry, upside down, and inside here. Cleanest job in the world, even though I'm using way more expensive brushes. So, 
at all does not make the painter. I said I was going to clean up using the sky from the old. Much easier to get in there and take stuff out of this one. Let's keep bumping the camera. I don't know if you saw any of it. Yeah. This is going to be a very long video. I don't even finish the straps. I need to speed up. This might be a two-parter. Uh, yeah, I can't go back over that stuff. Drying. All right. Um, dark leather for the belt. I am starting to wonder if I should have just done his armor all over. Okay, dark wood, let's do the belt. So I haven't used dark wood before, except for painting the lid of it. Alright, so let's start at the back. knocking things it doesn't help that I've um have to have the charging cable in the phone so I'm gonna keep knocking that as well. I need more on the brush, I took too much off. Better Worse. Maybe okay. Well, that was a lot of pulling. We got way too much on the brush now. Maybe no. Let's see what gravity does with all of this. None on the brush. This might look alright. Okay, that's the Back inside. Now aiming for the front without making a mess. It's not avoided yet. Okay, all of the bell is brown. I just need these shades to do what I want them to do. Alright. 
on est monte. Est-ce que là il y a une maison par contre It's gonna just be brown. It's very dark. Oh, I think it's quite a lot darker than the back here. And the other things I can do is after, let's just run a brush over uh, once it's dry and sort of take the top sort of highlighty bits off. Um, let's see what that does. Okay, handle, maybe do the handle, the dark brown of that little sword hilt. These teeny tiny details with paint that has a tendency to run and yep, no, it's done it. Run and pull everywhere. So um I like the fact that this paint stains an area. So you Put it on a flat surface and it will stain the flat surface but if you have too much paint it will just flow um, and so you end up with a dagger handle that's dark brown but it's flowed all of that dark brown to the uh, chain mail as well and then you're gonna go back with a cleanup like this, and sort of dab to like just smoothen the edges. And there we've got a hilt that's brown. In the picture, the dagger handle, the metal bits, the pommel. I don't know what this bit's called, and the scabbard metal bit is all silver, but um, I don't know, I think there might just be too much silver on this figure. I might end up having to paint it something else. Um, Alright, so then we're on to green or the grey. I think we're up to the grey. So it's like bigger brush because it's a bigger area and I'm going to be Grave Lord Grey so it's the same colour for the metallic I did on this guy Stick with the small one for now and do that area I said we should probably have done behind the shield before we did anything else. Um, I wish with these figures you could disassemble like your Warhammer stuff. Um, it would make things so much more simpler. But we'll just do a light pass. Sorry, you're probably not going to see much in the video for now. Maybe you'd jump ahead a minute. It's going to be moving the figure into really weird positions to try and get armor behind the shield. Mm 
Oops, got the shield itself. Too bad a job at the minute. Just gotta find an angle where I can get a view and the brush in at the same time. Um, and if I sneak peek in. Yeah, it's not actually too bad. Yeah, there's a bit more we could do. I mean, tabletop aren't playing, you know, actually going to be looking down this guy's shield. But, oh no, it's not painted. Might leave it at that though. Okay, if we keep running down this side of the shield, because I already started his um, shoulder pad, I really have to finish this guy. And he's all silver, so silver shoulder pad, silver armor, silver on his arms, full length armor on his arms. Carefully go across. Where that leather is. Gonna butt up against it, but don't uh, spread it. I'm still with the triple zero. I don't know if I should have swapped to a bigger brush. Because of the area, it seems to be giving me more control. Speed paint you're supposed to just lather on. I guess it's the figure. The figure detail requires extra precaution. And this is where we, um, sorry, I haven't seen any of that. So we've got behind his back, partly done. You can see um, his hair, similar grey colour. Um, but there's that blue grey of his hair, and then the dark black grey of that metallic. Uh, what I might do while we're here, though, is grab some of that. Um, should we go that? No. Dark wood is still wet, so let's just go behind the shield a little bit. And so we don't have a, the main areas we can see the shield aren't white. And I'll just make out like that's a wooden back of the shield. Anyway, this video, painting things you cannot see. And then this video, fixing all of the mistakes a noob made. So we 
definitely don't want brown on this. Uh, give it a wet, and it'll come off. And it'll just become a shadow. Okay. Sorry, again, didn't see any of that. I stuck this uh, battery on and since then you uh, guys haven't seen anything, right? Oh, so this video is not going to get very many views. If you're at this point in the video and you're still watching, give me a comment. Say, cheese. I'll give you a like and a heart. You're at this point of the video and you're still watching, say cheese. Um, Alright. I'd like to know if that's anybody. But, you know, I'm doing this for myself as well as whoever would care to watch. So. Just keep on cracking on. Okay, big shoulder pad. Armpit. Upside down again. This guy's being tortured. And carefully painting up to but not over any of this leather. That I painstakingly put there and made a ton of mistakes with. So at the end of this, should I have done the leather afterwards? Sorry. I might take this thing off again. I don't know, you guys aren't getting much of a sight. But at this point of the video, and still watching, say, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. I didn't see it. Alright. Um, elbow pad. Under the arm. Should swap over to a bigger brush. See how this number two goes. So go to the biggest of the sables that I bought today. How does this work? I still get the detail and control, but with extra brush capacity. I think it needs a good soak. It's quite dry. Yeah, this is the hand I got brown all over. You can see it all there. So I can covering it with grey. Fix my mistake. Or will it always look like he punched something brown? 
Give me some suggestions of something brown that he may have punched in the comments. I know this isn't live, but you know, we can pretend. I'll read your comments after the video and respond to every one of them. Um, is there anything else from the front here? I feel like I didn't do the front of his... His... Uh, thing here. Hmm. We never did his helmet. Gosh. We didn't do his helmet. I'm going to finish the... Um, upper half of them. This will be a good test of how well this brush works. Can it do a helmet? This is a big, flat, round area. No detail. I've got a hair going haywire already. So first thing I've painted with it and there's a hair going haywire. Do you guys snip those off? Condition your brushes. Um, buy a new brush. What do you do? When you got a haywire here, it just flicks off and wants to do its own thing. Okay, this is the telling bit. I've got detail bits to do now. We need the pointy end of the brush to be super, super pointy. Or do you just leave it that metallic edge? What would you do? Leave that metallic edge. Um, yeah, we could leave it, I guess. Frames his face. Alright, let's do that. I need some more grey. Let's try it up. Getting a coffee stain puddle in that paint. Oopsie, boink. Rub. Sorry, I've lost you guys all at what, five minutes. Lots of fine chain detail right next to leather. These are bits I find really difficult, especially because you spill color, you know, like. runny paint. It goes where it wants to go. And it pulls where it wants to pull. Um, you paint a straight line, it becomes a wiggly line. And that's pretty much speed paint. It is impacted by by the texture of the figure, the undercoat that you applied, 
and gravity. It's a slow drying time, uh, which is great. You've got extra time to work with it. But equally, it can do what it wants after you've finished putting it where you want it to be. Yeah, benefits and weaknesses. So, um, yeah, number two worked quite well. So, it's got a nice tip. So, I was able to get in the, uh, amongst that leather, alright. Um, I've got a little bit of cleanup to do just in here. Because this skirt bit is green. There we go. Um, I think I've got a bit of brown. Got everywhere. <sighs> what are we? Now in two. Well, if you're still here, good on you. This one has been a lot trickier than I imagined. Um, and we're still at the hard part that I didn't want to do first. And I'm not going to do first. And I'm not even going to do next. I'm going to do his legs. So, I still have some grey, so his boots are also the same armour metallic. Could talk a little bit about how I prepped these guys, so um, after learning from the first two, these two were already zenithaled um, at that point. Um, I fully metallic coated everywhere. Um, that should be metallic. Uh, so I'm not doing that on camera. And all of the metallic is done. I don't know why I'm being careful here. That whole rock base is this colour. So you just slap it on. Um, where was I? Yeah, the metallics just take too long. They're probably not that interesting to watch paint, so don't. And um, yeah, so I'm not filming it. Um, so I did a fair bit of prep work for these guys uh, outside of this video so they were zenithal primed all of the metallic was put down i'm actually going to use a cheap brush for this because i need more paint because this is basing and don't spend a ton of money on an expensive brush if you're just basing Let's see if I can bring some life into this old monster brush. Yeah, this is the day. Rip this guy, slap it on, move it around, not care where it goes. She granted the first figures that I painted were from the Grim Forest. They're really big minis. I don't know the millimeter size, but they're. Um, I wish I can show you. This is uh, 
minis I'm painting at the moment, and this is the first mini I painted. So, um, the big brush, um, definitely a necessity for those minis. But then when I transitioned to painting these small guys, I continued using the same brush. Oh, duh. So noob. How did you not know that a smaller mini would need a small brush? Um, because I've never done this before. Anyway, so now I'm learning, uh, every brush has a purpose. And you don't own one brush to paint minis, you own several. Um... And you pick the right one for the job. And if there's a cheap brush that can do the job, pick that one over an expensive one. Okay, so we did basing. That's done. See, it's super quick. That's speed painting. Monster brush, slap it on, done. Um, and if you're painting armies, they're all the same. That is what you're going to do. Super quick. Boom. Alright, but now we're going to go back to our number two. And I want a green. Now the green I want is uh, quite bright. But it's not orc skin bright. So what I'm going to do is... Um... um I'm going to grab some couple of drops of camo cloak and added drop of orc skin. And let's see what that looks like. So let's do a two to one. So one, two of camo cloak. And then orc skin. color theory so all I'm doing is taking a dull green and adding a bright green to it and hoping that I'll have a less bright green I'm then going to take a not cheap brush but my original army painted brushes and then mix it See what it looks like. Let's do the base of the skirt. I'm going to keep using the same brush I'm using at the minute. So let's just do in here. And so it's not hawk skin, but it's also not camo cloak. It's something else entirely. Is it? What is it? Well, I'm putting on a lot. It's very thick. It's going to pull everywhere. Being very careful to not get um, over the areas I'm going to want to do in detail. Wash that off. What do you think? Is that green for the green player? Like it's quite a bright green down there. But it wasn't orc skin green. I think it's quite nice. Just need to take a little bit off.
Yeah. Okay. Now. Problem. I can't paint what's in the picture. So I think I'm not going to. I'm going to paint instead. Um, something different. So in the picture, see these little circles. You probably can't. It's all circles there. The inside ring of the circle in the picture is gold. And the rest is green. Well, I'm just going to do this stripe green. Too much paint. Too much paint. didn't. I lost it. I was going to be like, I'm not going to get any green where that gold is, but I'm going to fail. Aren't I? There's white in there. How did I miss that? I think when you get these bubbles, sometimes underneath the bubble can still be an area of white that you didn't actually paint. Um, so I've got this thin strip. Alright, thin strip. Done. Some fix up required. Something up with there where I put green paint and then it's not green later. Okay, let's uh, clean that off. Now I'm going to do the bottom stripe first. Let's see what is the effort involved in getting green and gold. I think it's better, but there's a green tinge. We give all the gold just a minor green tinge, because I mean, nobody's perfect. Okay, so then the bottom skirt ring is also a thing. Is it a skirt? What is it called? Comment below. I don't know my medieval clothing. Or weapon parts for that matter. Oh, 
Why is it even his weapon call? Some it's probably actually wood, but in the picture it looked bronze, so I painted it bronze. Looks like it would be wood with nails or spikes in it. We're on the home stretch, everybody. Just about finished the main figure. Okay. I don't know if there's much point doing it under the skirt, but I mean it was painted black anyway. And I'm just gonna miss bits. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, do you guys paint this bit for completeness? See what I'm talking about, but big flat dry area. It's pretty much black from the undercoat. Do you paint it? Got it all. Can't really be sure. Let me just check. Oh, no, I only got half of it. I might have to do it in a different light. Oh, no, there we go, that's better. I've got an angle where I can see it, but you guys will see nothing. Ha ha ha. Why would you subscribe to this guy? He doesn't even show us what he's doing. Okay, there we go. His underskirt is green, you'll have to believe me. Um, I've got a fair amount of cleanup after that one. It, um, I won't be able to clean up, but I'll try and even out. So let's just wet my cleanup brush. Make a wet spot on my rag. And particularly here, you can see the green rides up into one of the circles. Where's Dab? Wipe it in the wet spot. Dab with a bit of a rub. Wipe it in the wet spot. We're wiping it on the wet spots to get the green off. That is already made it onto the brush, and there we go, that looks better, um, anywhere else, nope, all good, okay, a little bit of green on his shield. That's the home run. I'm wondering if we should do anything to this dagger though. I see the dagger there needs some assistance. It's these little silver bits screaming for some color. Um. What we can do is 
that dark brown. Is that this one? No, that's the grey. Yeah, there's the dark brown. I'll paint the dark brown over all of the silver bits of the dagger. And they all just add. So I'll add something. I don't know what I'll add. A dark brown metal, whatever the dark brown metal is, that's what this is. I think I just wrecked it, but... At least now it kind of blends into his suit and isn't screaming out, You ruined me! It's probably like the best dagger in the universe, and... I've gone and painted it crappy. What's your opinion on Sir Gawain's dagger? Tabletop ready. If that was your answer, that is correct. That is what we're going for here. Alright, more green. Back to the triple zero. Loaded little green. Take some off. Now, super careful here. Um, we've got that little dagger there, right in the middle. Guess what color that has to be? like how small this is, do not like that it has a trailing um, hair, there's a single couple of hairs that are just ugh, annoying me, they're like longer than all the others, and so it's kind of like a looped point teeny weeny ears. In the comments tell me that's what sables are supposed to be like. That's what makes them amazing is how fine the hairs are and how wildly loopy you can make that point. I would just learn how to use it, I would respect it, instead of wanting to cut it off. Okay, fair point. I will learn, and I will respect. Dagger sword thingy. I'm getting really close and see how many mistakes I made. Then I go over the lines much. Oh, green is really hard to come out of the sword brush. I'm putting more green on it in a minute, but it's always nice to be able to get out all of the paint that you put in. 
So how bad did I do? Yeah, there's a bit of green here. Isn't supposed to be there. And now it's white because I took the black off. That was clever. Alright, that'll do. Okay, next. <sighs> this is probably the most difficult. Um, I think I might just use a bigger brush, actually. And I don't know if in the end I'm going to go over all of the gold. I'm supposed to colour in around these stars. Well, I couldn't even paint these stars. They're so small. I can barely even focus on these stars. Yeah, how's that for first pass? Okay, upper side. Deep breaths. Not bad, not bad. Okay, coming into the top. Don't know how to hold my brush. Just doing it like this, I could rest the mini on the table. Maybe I do still do that, but come down on a different angle. Maybe I try that. Get a real handle on where that brush is going to land. I mean, once it's landed, I can move it around. So right in the middle there, there will be green, because it's between two stars, same as, this is where that bloody trailing here is not good. That was a mission, and it's not perfect. Okay, what kind of touch-ups are we needing? I don't even think the scope is actually that big, uh, that great. So I'm trying to paint perfect stars, but the sculpt, the stars aren't perfect. I think that bloody 
do. I'll go over it with maybe some more gold. Just to make sure I've got that highlight right. Um, and since we've got this custom green here, we'll just do a bit more. Mind you, custom green. It was two to one. That would be hard to forget. recommend always starting fresh when you're trying to create a color or were you more organic and just like mix stuff on the palette as you go I'll make sure this is just nice coverage because this is the player color Whoever picks green, if anybody ever does, this is who they're going to get. Looks like his eyes are hollow. I might have to go back in and uh, add some depth there. And I think maybe the black around his shield isn't black enough. The shield around the outside needs to be grey, so we can just slap that on. Grey, like everywhere else. Come off the stand. Never mind. Probably singing better without them on the stand. Ah, oh, who am I kidding? Nobody's even watching. Yeah, there we go. Looks good. Um, there we go. Alright, so. I want to try. Grim black. So I know we are an hour and a half in it using speed paint. Probably the longest speed paint video on YouTube. How's that? That is going to be the tagline. Let's go, Grim black. So first of all, I'm going to dot the eyes, so teeny tiny little brush, load it up, wipe it off, and watch me fail spectacularly. needs he's <laughs> got an eyeball um, on. The first one kind of had an obvious play 
this and I was able to do it. But this next one is whoa, whoa. hang on, let me grab another lens. It's probably gonna make painting impossible, but I'm using these um big lenses on a headgear thing. I can put two on at once, which means this is three and a half times two and a half. Which means I think I can focus in and get a paintbrush that close to my face. Maybe I can. Stupid little hair that's like right on the end of it. I think I stuck it on him, but nothing happened. No, I'm gonna give up on that. We can add him through this, it's, it's kind of cool though, that's neat. Now you can see the eyeball mistake I just did really well. Because he's got an eyeball there, but he doesn't have one there. He's got a stupid black line across his face. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, yeah, we'll just fix it with some more Crusader skin. Might actually let me see in the detail where his eye is supposed to be. If I do want to paint it now, I actually have a target. Okay, here we go. Fixed. Um. Back to Grim Black though, what I was thinking is um, the shield in the picture is actually black, not grey. And I thought I would paint it grey, but kind of not feeling it. Let's try for black and see what happens. Half of it, and we do the other half.
I think it's a little bit more like from a wicket. Um, I might hear that. It's a bit on the end right there. Right in the corner there. It's really quick drying, so I think I need to leave it alone. And there, his shield is black. So, if you have skipped to the end, you missed a video and a half. I tell you what, so many mistakes! Oh my gosh, so many mistakes! Uh, an hour and 42. I am about to call it done. Um, I'm going to do another coat on the base. Um, let's just not risk mixing paint. Just grab some new Gravelord Grey. A couple drops of that. So, finishing up now. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, even those who skipped to see the final product. I am very happy that you're interested in my speed paint journey. I hope that you will like this video and subscribe to my channel to see more like it. Um, I have another four nights in this series to paint, um, including the legendary Sir Arthur. So subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you will be reminded when I post. Um, I am painting almost exclusively with speed paint, so if you're interested in that product at all, uh, my channel will be one of the best to come to as we explore mini painting from the uh, opinion or the, the eyes of a beginner painter who knows nothing but speed paint. What can you do with it? What can it do? Um, and as we can see with this figure right here, um, it can do a hell of a lot. Um, it was not fast and I put a lot of that down to me being a beginner painter. Uh, maybe doing some things in the wrong order, but uh, we've got shading behind the shield, we've got leather work, two different colours of leather work, we've got um, our gold stars, green surrounding them, nice black backdrop on the shield, all of our silver has been washed with speed paint, um, our bronze has been washed with speed paint, um, the only thing we didn't wash with speed paint was the gold. Uh, we've left that as is in this figure, um, but keep an eye out, there are other figures that I will paint and you'll see what colours can we put over gold to make it stand out even further when I'm talking to you. Look at him. Gold everywhere. So keep an eye out for that, thank you for watching this video and always remember, don't be a noob.